everybody! Thank you for watching. This week, we'll be talking about Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh's death, a 3,000-year-old tomb discovered in Egypt, the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, and the volcano that erupted twice in Caribbean island. The country of the week is Egypt, and the extra fun segment is all about ancient pyramids and pharaohs. Today, for the peer at your career, we have a special guest, Siddhi Mapsankar, who is a fashion designer. She lives in India and, fa and has a fashion company, which she started with her twin sister. Hope you enjoy. On Friday 9th April, something very tragic happened. His Royal Highness, Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip died. He was Queen Elizabeth II's husband and lived up till the age 99. It's really sad because he had only two months to go till his 100th birthday, which is on June 10th. He was a fan of the sea and actually fought in the World War II in the Royal Navy in Britain. He supported Britain even though all four of his sisters married Germans and supported the Nazis. His, his mother was Queen Victoria's great-granddaughter and his father was the King of Greece's son. Prince Philip went to Gordonstown, a school, a boarding school in fact, in Scotland and loved it so much that he sent his son there who hated it as much as he adored it. Prince Philip loved that school because it supported um, active and physical activities and not just the academic ones. He had lots of projects supporting youth, science and sports such as the Duke of Edinburgh Award, which is named after him and is a really sporty and active event. In Egypt, a 3,000-year-old tomb was discovered after months of digging. It was covered in sand and it still remained so intact even though it's so ancient. Artifacts such as jewelry, pottery, scarab beetles and more stuff were found inside this tomb. For Egypt, it's the second most important find since Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered. Last week in Egypt, the remains of all the mummies, 22 in total, were transported from one museum to another in a colorful parade. This was a very important event and it took years of planning to get it properly. Even the president was there for the opening and it was a really successful one. It was really special for Egypt as well since these mummies are really important to its history. AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine has been showing very few and very rare side effects. Some people under the age of 30 have been getting blood clots which could be fatal. Although the risk of getting these blood clots is definitely outweighed by the protection the vaccine gives. The waiting period between the first and second dose is longer now, between 8 to 12 weeks, varying in different countries. The AstraZeneca vaccine to children stopped in Britain due to some of these cases. La Soufrière, a volcano on Caribbean island, erupted twice on Friday. The first volcano eruption was not that bad, but the second one wasn't okay. Thousands were evacuated from the island because of this, and the whole island was blanketed in ash and smoke. The last eruption was in 1979, and but, but this time nobody got hurt because for some months the volcano had been showing a few signs that it would erupt until they were all prepared. 
In fact, the volcano spouted ash and smoke six kilometers high, which is a lot. L'Egypte est un pays reliant l'Afrique du Nord et et Moyen-Orient. Sa capitale est Caire et sa population est de 100 millions d'habitants. Égypte est connue pour le désert Sahara, le Nil, les plages, les pyramides et les corailliens. L'Égypte a beaucoup d'histoire et est très ancienne, qui remonte aux des pharaons et des pyramides. Savez-vous que les Égyptiens de l'Antiquité ont inventé le papier, les stylos, le dentifrice et les clés? Les, les Égyptiens étaient l'une des seules civilisations qui ont inventé l'écriture d'une manière indépendante. Merci. Hello. Hi, girls. How are you guys? Good. And you? Good to see you. Long time. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So far, so good. That's great. Yeah. Um, so we're going to ask you just five questions about your career. Okay. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Could you start with introducing yourself? Yes, my name is Siddhi Mapsankar. I'm co-founder of fashion label Mapsankar, which we started together. I started it along with my sister, twin sister, Riddhi Mapsankar, in 2009. And it's been good going so far. We have participated in various fashion weeks in India, like Lakme Fashion Week, India Beach Fashion Week. We have an online portal. And recently, I have started uh, teaching uh, fashion online. Uh, so I have students all across the world who uh, learn fashion from me online. Yes. Wow, that's really nice. Wow, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, uh, could you explain a bit more about what you do? So basically, we make customized clothing, uh, primarily uh, in the field of uh, couture fashion, uh, occasion wear, uh, bridal fashion. So typically our clients are, uh, you know, corporate clients or uh, the richer class of people who want to spend on customized uh, clothing, bespoke clothing. We specially uh, specialize in intricate embroideries, uh, fabric manipulation, textures. And of course, we have designed for a lot of Bollywood celebrities, right from Priyanka Chopra, Ali Abad, Karina Kapoor, Akshay Kumar, and the works. So we do a lot of clothing for uh, Indian ad uh, advertisements also. And we create a lot of uh, uh, interesting looks for the red carpet for the Indian celebrities as well. Wow, that's quite cool. Thank you. And Thank um, why did you decide to go into fashion? Wow, that's a nice question. As a kid, I have always uh, admired uh, art and craft. My mother is a professional painter. You can see some paintings lying there. So these are made by my mom. So genetically, perhaps thanks to my genes and by God's grace, I had a bit of art uh, in my hand uh, growing up. And I would always sketch uh, clothes that's something I loved sketching and that love for sketching clothes turned into designing clothes and eventually me getting into a fashion school and uh, uh, today here I am with my fashion label along with my sister so and I also love teaching fashion so I started my own digital platform where I teach fashion uh, in the corona times so I have been actively involved with that venture also so yes I love everything pretty in terms of clothes and uh, shiny colorful things. I love it. Yeah. Wow. wow. And what's your favorite part of your career? I think the most favorite part of my career is that I become part of somebody's happiness, right? People wear clothes 
buy expensive clothes because a of course they like it but b it makes them feel good so in a way i'm become a part of their happiness and if i can contribute making them feel better that is what makes me most excited about my profession because uh, they wear my clothes on the most important days of their lives like weddings or birthday of their or first birthday of their children so all these occasions are so so special and i become a part of their special day so that makes me uh, more excited about this profession yeah wow and um this is the final question what advice do you have for kids i would say uh, from my own journey um uh, when i used to sketch etch and make clothes for my dolls you know that's how i actually started making clothes as a kid i used to make clothes for my dolls um little did i know that time that this would turn into a full blown career path for me yeah so uh, always look at your passions your interest um with a depth if something excites you uh, go deeper into it or uh, get to the bottom of it just don't scratch it on the surface it could be music it could be astronomy it could be painting it could be anything that tickle you tickles your senses you know just uh, become best in that and be open to explore new things uh, i think today even today like you know i'm always open to learning things i am a uh, trained kathak dancer i'm answering exams to become a professional kathak dancer and get a graduation certificate there uh, i'm also learning classical music recently you know during pandemic that's something i have started learning online i love making graphite portraits so i am trying to you know uh, take that skill of mine to a different level so i think you should never stop learning no matter how old you are uh, learning is not only about Or, you know restricted to schooling it's something that you should continue way uh, later in your in your adulthood or rest of your life so just be a good learner that's what i would say keep learning yeah thank you thank you so, you. Much. Thank you so thank much for you. this interview it was really nice to take uh, for you to take your time for this thank you so much for your thank you so much i hope it helps and inspires uh, some of you and uh, you chase your dreams yes thank you thank you goodbye goodbye hi everybody for the extra fun segment today we'll be talking about ancient uh, ancient egyptians pyramids and pharaohs i hope you enjoy the ancient pyramids were built by slaves and were built for pharaohs They were used as tombs for when the pharaohs died. In Egypt, afterlife was considered special and that death was a gateway to a new and improved life. Before pharaohs were kept in the pyramids, they were their organs were first removed and then they were cleaned in resin and salt. Finally, they were wrapped in linen and put in a coffin called a sarcophagus. They were buried with their treasures and even pets such as cats who were considered sacred. There were a total of 170 pharaohs in Egypt, the last one being Cleopatra. Did you know that her tomb has never been found until now? There are a total of 118 pyramids in Egypt and the largest one is Giza. That one is also the most famous pyramid. Thank you and I hope you learned something new.